Hi, welcome to Learning Monkey. I am Raghuvir. In this class, we'll discuss about RSA algorithm with an example. And in our previous classes, we already discussed about the basics required for understanding asymmetric key cryptography. Please watch those classes and come back here. The link for the playlist is provided in the description below. This is our first asymmetric key cryptography algorithm which we are going to discuss. Here we are going to understand the example, the mathematics behind this, why this is going to work. That we are going to discuss in our next class. Now coming to the concept, first we need to understand in RSA, we are going to do asymmetric key cryptography means here we are having public key and private key. First, we need to generate the public key and private key. Who is going to generate that? In our last class, we discussed that uh, the receiver, sender and receiver. If the receiver wants to get the data, he is going to generate the keys, public and private keys. The public key is shared with the sender. So he is going to use the public key and encrypt the data and he will send the data to the receiver. And by using the private key, he is going to decrypt it. That is what happens in asymmetric key cryptography. Now let's try to understand what we are going to do. If the receiver wants to generate the key, first he has to select two prime numbers. Here in our example, we are selecting 7 and 11. We call it as P and Q. But in reality, we are going to select large prime numbers that are having at least 512 bits. Each prime number is going to have 512 bits, 512, 512. When you multiply it, you are going to get a N value of 1024 bits. According to today's computation levels, it is needed that the N value should be at least 1024 bits. Then only it is not possible to crack the private key. Why, why it is all these things will be understood in our next class. Now by selecting the prime numbers P and Q, N, we have to find N. N is equal to P multiplied by Q that is equal to 77. After that, we need to find the phi of N. Because we know these prime numbers P and Q, we can easily find the phi of N. Otherwise, it is not possible. Why phi of N? It is going to need the factors, prime factors are needed. Prime factors are uh, not possible to identify for large numbers. These discussions made previously. So because of this P and Q, so if you are having prime factors, phi of n is equal to 7 minus 1, 11 minus 1. Why you got this? These discussions made when we discussed the Euler's pi function. So the phi of n value is 60. Now, we have to select e comma d from the set z phi of n. See the point you need to understand z phi of n. From this set we are going to select e and d. z phi of n is equal to z60 here. In our example z60. From this we need to select e and d. What is e? Assume that if you select e is equal to 13, d is equal to 37. Means inverse of e is d how you are going to identify the inverse value by using extended Euclidean algorithm method. Or there is one more method using phi of n also. We have not yet discussed it because extended Euclidean algorithm you can use it uh, that can be done in a polynomial time. So you can easily identify E and D. Inverse of E is equal to D. But we have selected this set from Z phi of n. Don't forget this. This is very important because the key lies there. So from now, public key is considered as E comma N. This receiver is going to send public key to all the senders. E comma N is sent to all of them. It is open. It is public. Anyone can see the two, public key. And the private key here is D. The inverse value is taken as private key. Now, what happens during the encryption stage and what happens during the decryption stage? Let's try to understand. During the encryption stage, take the plain text P is equal to 5. So, if you want to generate the ciphertext C is equal to P, 
p power e mod n this is an exponential you have to calculate the exponential you can do it in polynomial time because we are having an algorithm called fast exponential 5 power 13 mod 77 the point you need to understand here we are using mod n e and d are generated on z phi of n but still we are using that on mod n why this matches why we can do that this point we are going to understand in our next class so 5 power 13 mod 77 c is equal to c means cipher text is equal to 26 instead of plain text 5 we are going to se send 26 as our output so once this cipher text reaches the destination he he has to do the decryption that he has to identify the plain text plain text is equal to c power c power d he is going to use the private key by using this private key mod n he is going to generate the plain text 26 power 37 mod 7 which mod 77 which is we got it as 5 so during the decryption you got the plain text so this is what happens in RSA algorithm during the encryption this is what happens during the decryption this is what happened here we are doing it on numbers don't forget that means if you are having characters you have to convert them into numbers and you have to identify this uh, cipher text and plain text plain text and uh, converted in encryption and decryption we'll do one more example in our next next class uh, uh, how to convert the given plain text to numbers and how we apply the encryption and decryption in our coming coming classes hope you understand this example in our next class we are going to identify the mathematics why it is possible if you have any questions regarding the concept please post your questions in the comment section below thanks for watching if you haven't subscribed to our channel please subscribe to our channel and press bell icon for the latest updates thank you